To find out how human skulls evolved to become very different from those of other apes, I spoke with Dan Lieberman. Here's a human head. This is actually a, a cast of, a, of a, a human who lived in, in Europe in the Ice Ages. And you can see that, just like, like people today, he has a small face that's <coughs> uh, very vertical, um, and a very large brain, and a very rounded skull. Um, but if you look at, say, a, a baboon, right over here, you can see the baboon has a very enormous uh, snout uh, that sticks way out in from its face. Um, and it's very, a very small brain and a very low, long, low uh, uh, skull vault. The big things that changed in human evolution is that our faces shrank, our brains expanded, we tucked our faces underneath our brains, and of course we also became bipeds. The skulls of modern humans are also very different from those of our closest relatives, the Neanderthals. A Neanderthal um, has, this is, a, this is a cast of a Neanderthal, this is a, lived about 60,000 years ago in France, and uh, as you can see, he has a very large face. Now his face is still fairly vertical, but the face is, is voluminous, it's huge compared to a human face, much larger, and the face is also stuck forward really far relative to the brain case. And a very simple way of explaining that is that if you were to sort of stick your finger up your eyeball, right, through your eyeball into your, into your head, you'd, your finger would, if it went through the eyeball, would go into the frontal lobe of your brain. But if you were to do that to this Neanderthal, which of course you can't because fortunately his eyeball's gone, but you'd, your finger would come out in his brow ridge rather than in his, in, his, uh, in his frontal lobe because the whole face is stuck further forward relative to the brain in, in the Neanderthal than the human. These subtle differences in Neanderthal skull anatomy would have made it harder for them to stabilize their heads while running. So when we run, um, the head wants to pitch forward, and that's because the center of mass of the head is actually in front of the joint. So the joint is more or less here, around where your ear hole is, so his ear hole is there. And the center of mass of the skull is probably about here, right, 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 in the, in the t right underneath where you're, you're, you begin to go gray on the side of your head. So that means that when you hit the ground, your head wants to pitch forward like that. And it can do so very rapidly. But our heads are pretty balanced. Um, and we have interesting mechanisms to keep our heads still. Um, a Neanderthal head, um, its joint is more or less in the same place as ours, so more or less opposite the ear hole. But because it has such an enormous face, its center of mass is about a centimeter or more forward than in the human being, which meant that the same force uh, in a Neanderthal would cause its head to pitch forward with much greater, much greater force and much greater velocity. And so um, we think that Neanderthals would have had a slightly more difficult time, just like all other earlier humans, in stabilizing the head. They surely did it, but one of the traces that we can see that they had to work a little harder to stabilize their head is that the, the ligament here that, uh, that attaches to the back of the skull is very robust in some Neanderthals and some early, early you know, ancestors of humans. That, that, that nuchal ligament probably acts as a kind of spring that helps pull the head back and keep it stable.